Uh, next, we're going to look at the accounting. So the accounting has a, a few different sections. Um, you have your receivables and your receipts. Your receipts are uh, your revenue, your recorded payments uh, for your receivables. You have your payables uh, and your receipts for your payables, your receipts being your expenses, recorded expenses here. Your banking for your bank accounts, undeposited funds uh, is an option I'll talk about here in a bit. Uh, your general ledger accounts, uh, basic journal entry, uh, debit and credit style entries, and property management, which is a specific feature for property management companies uh, to record their management fees, generate their owner statements, and uh, issue their uh, owner distributions. So with the receivables, uh, you have the filter bar up here at the top that uh, hopefully you're familiar with by now. Uh, on the right hand side you can see some delivery options you can print or export this to uh, Excel uh, you have some view options here you can change it around uh, to you know fit your your tastes and then of course we can uh, go in and record a payment for each of these uh, particular receivables and so if we you know go in and we say okay let's just receive this payment we have received this 1050 from Maria we can just click receive and that payment has been recorded within the system. If we need to record, let's say a partial payment, uh, this particular tenant here, Pete, owes uh, $3,063, but let's say we only received uh, a check of $2,000, we can uh, go and put $2,000 in here. It's going to tell us that this is now a partial payment instead of saying receive, it tells us it's partial. If we click partial, it's going to go and it's going to automatically try and allocate this out to the charges on the account. Uh, we can then just go and we can record and save that particular payment. If we need to modify any of the charges that are showing up on this particular receivable, we can just go ahead and remove those particular charges directly uh, from this page. Uh, likewise, if we need to look at the tenant's uh, ledger or any details about their specific unit we can do so by clicking their name which is hyperlinked. So this is all the receivables. This is a very quick and easy way to record any of the payments that you have coming in. Uh, if you have a stack of checks at the beginning of the month and you're looking to uh, just fire through them and record payments very quickly this is probably the best page to come and do so. Uh, you can of course do the same thing on the units and tenants page uh, but this is going to be much quicker uh, you can just come in here, let's say you have the check sitting here, and just start, start typing in the name of the tenant. You can click Receive. Um, so it's, a, it's just a very quick and easy way of doing that. The next tab we have here is the Receipts. And the Receipts are your recorded payments. So you can see here, Maria, uh, the payment that we had just recorded on the Receivables page. Uh, you can see the details of this. It will show you the charges that have been applied to that payment. And you have some options across the bottom here that can be performed for this particular payment, whether that's adjusting it. Marketing is bad, so say uh, a check came and it bounced and you wanted to look that up and mark it as a bad payment. Uh, you can go ahead and mark that as a bad payment, It'll automatically assess those charges back to that tenant's account. Uh, and notify them that uh, has been done. Also, you can print a receipt for this particular tenant as well. Um, so if we went and we wanted to, uh, let's say a tenant came into the office and, and they gave us a check or they gave us cash uh, and we wanted to give them a receipt, we could do so just by recording that payment uh, and coming in and printing a receipt. At the time of payment, when you're actually recording the payment, you also have the option of saving the payment and printing a receipt at the same time, uh, regardless of which page you're on. Uh, but if a uh, tenant came in and they just requested a receipt at a later date or you forgot to print one, you can always come here and print a, a copy of it as well. And of course, you can remove the payment um, if you'd like. Removing a payment will assess the charges back to that tenant's account. Um, if you didn't want to have those charges on the account, you could then just remove that account, uh, sorry, that charge from that tenant's ledger. You can see any failed payments that have been recorded as well. So if we had gone through and we had recorded, let's say, this particular uh, payment as a bad payment, it would show up then under the failed uh, tab. Likewise, if a tenant is submitting an ACH payment from, from their account, 
uh, you'll be able to see any failed you know, return payments, uh, insufficient funds payments uh, under the failed tab as well. Uh, the filter bar can be very useful here. You have a few other options at your disposal uh, in addition to date range. You can you know, filter by the payment source, whether or not it's cash payment, check payment, uh, it's a rent post payment, uh, if your tenants have paid online. Uh, you can also start filtering down by owner. So you can see respectively you know, how, how much has been received for uh, a specific owner uh, that, that you're managing properties for or uh, any other owners that you've added to your account. The payables being the next tab here. These are the, the uh, bills that you've received that are to be paid out to uh, specific vendors. And so very similarly to the receivables tab, uh, you can just go through and record these as paid, uh, adding a date, maybe a, a check or reference number if you have one for that specific uh, expense, and it will record that uh, particular uh, expense. On the left here, you can remove it or you can edit this uh, payable as needed as well. On the right-hand side here, one thing you'll notice is a little plus tab. By clicking this plus tab, you have the ability to add a new payable within the system. Uh, and so when adding payables, um, and we'll go into some, some other details, uh, a little more fine grain uh, in another video, but uh, you can mark this as unpaid or paid. Marking as unpaid will have it showing up on the payables tab. Uh, marking as paid will go ahead and record this as an expense, and one thing you'll notice when uh, toggling unpaid and paid is the requirement to choose the payment account and so that will mark that as a paid expense uh, choosing the ex account that this is being uh, paid out of. Uh, you'll choose who to pay it to, the vendor, uh, any notes, a general ledger account to uh, expense this to, or sorry, the general ledger account in which this is, uh, expense is recorded the unit or owner for which this is being expensed uh, and any you know description details and the amount uh, and, and that will automatically record uh, that particular payable or expense. Uh, and across the top of course the filter bar and some delivery options. With the receipts for payables uh, you'll see all of the recorded expenses and so like we were saying, if you mark this as paid, this is where uh, they will automatically uh, show up. Otherwise, if uh, from the payables tab, if you marked one of those as paid, they would then show up under uh, this particular section. You have some options here, marking it as unpaid, we'll throw it back under payables. You can record a similar expense. Uh, um, this could be really useful if, say, uh, you have a particular expense that you see month to month. Uh, you can go in, you can click record similar. It's going to bring up all the details for this particular expense. Uh, if everything is basically the same, you can go in and just change the date recorded on it uh, and hit save and it's automatically going to record another expense exactly like this one. You can edit this particular payment if you need to do so or you can remove it uh, and any expenses that are associated with it. You do have some other filters on this particular page. You do have the owners and vendor uh, filters, but uh, you have a more filters link here where you can filter on down into a particular general ledger account or even a unit group. Um, so, you know, a really good way of, you know, defining and seeing exactly uh, which expenses uh, fall under, you know, specifically what account. So the next tab we're going to look at is the undeposited funds tab. And the Undeposited Funds tab is going to show you all of the payments that have been recorded and have been allocated out to the respective uh, Undeposited Funds account. Uh, as you can see here, we have a large number of Undeposited Funds payments in this particular account. Uh, what you can do is go through each of these uh, as you're reconciling, uh, say, a, a stack of checks that you've collected at the beginning of the month and you've gone in you've recorded all those payments uh, for that day and then you're going and wanting to generate a deposit slip. So as you're going back through those checks at the end of the day, you can start checking those off as you're putting them into uh, your envelope. Uh, it's going to total these items up and then it's going to allow you to deposit these into whichever bank account you're going to deposit these checks. You can then click deposit 
uh, it's going to make that deposit uh, within the system. It's going to automatically generate a deposit slip for those specific payments. Uh, you can then pull up that deposit slip and print that deposit slip out as needed uh, and take this to your bank. Uh, cut this off. You have the deposit detail for the uh, specific payments. Um, and then this can then just be scanned in with your checks at your local bank. <clears throat> so this page is really useful for uh, the beginning of the month. You have a stack of checks, you're going in, recording those, and then of course just reconciling them. To set up the undeposited funds account, uh, you would go to your settings. This is not enabled by default, so this would be something you would want to enable. Uh, underneath your accounting, uh, you have the option up here for your receivables to use the undeposited funds as the default deposit account. Uh, this means when you're recording a payment, funds are automatically going to be put into that account. Uh, so they'll show as pending underneath your accounting uh, and your receipts. Uh, you'll see that these payments, if they're un under the undeposited funds, will show uh, a little icon here telling you that uh, that particular payment is pending meaning that it's showing underneath the undeposited funds account. Once it's deposited, it'll no longer show as pending. So general ledger accounts default, um, all your general ledger accounts, you can add new ones, of course, um, customize these however you like. You can edit them, remove them, uh, basically make these match your company's general ledger accounts and whatever you best see fit for your company. Uh, journal entries, standard, uh, standard uh, debit and credit style journal entries. Um, as you can see here, payments that have been recorded. Uh, of course, you can filter uh, these as well. And the property management tab is um, a very important uh, page for property management companies uh, assisting with the uh, calculation of management fees, the uh, owner statements, uh, and finally, owner distributions, uh, sort of a one, two, three step process. At the top here, you'll see each of the management fee structures that have been set up for this particular account. Uh, you can add a new management fee structure by clicking the plus here. Uh, and management fee structures can be created in a number of different ways, uh, depending on how you have those set up for your uh, management company. Uh, you have a flat fee option, which is just sort of as you would guess, a standard flat fee charged per unit. Uh, you have a percentage. Uh, so in this case, you can choose a particular revenue account that you would like to calculate percentages against. You can add multiple revenue accounts if you need to do so. Or a flat fee and a percentage. Uh, so this one's the, the most complex. You have a couple different calculation methods for this. Uh, it can be a flat fee plus the percentage. Uh, or whichever's greater or whichever's lesser. Um, and of course, you'll just give this uh, structure a name that you can uh, remember it by. Uh, and then the default statement date uh, here. Uh, this, this particular thing is used for internal purposes and it's not something that you should worry about too much. The flat fee, um, so let's say if we are doing, let's say a $50 flat fee per unit um, and we want to do with rental revenue, 10% uh, of rental revenue, and maybe we also want to get uh, late fees. Um, we'll do, say, 50% of late fees uh, as our collection. And, and so then this save this fee structure. And then fee structures are then assigned directly to a unit. Uh, by either editing the unit or when adding a unit, you can choose which fee structure is associated with it. And then, of course, uh, at the beginning of the month, we can choose the date range that, that's to be used for this particular uh, fee structure. And then we can generate. Um, and let's see if we can't find one here uh, with some information on it. Uh, this particular one has already been generated for this statement range here. Um, but we can go and we can do a regenerate all if we like, uh, just to see how this calculation works. And as you can see, it's gonna run that calculation to get each of these units uh, for the revenue that's been received over that period, running the calculations, giving you a unit fee total, 
uh, all the way down for all of the units under this specific owner. So this particular owner. Uh, and then it's going to give you the owner fee total. And for each of the owners all the way uh, down uh, for all the units that are associated with this particular management fee structure. If we save those fees, it's automatically going to add the management fee uh, expenses to the account, or the payables rather. Uh, you can then mark these as paid. And then it's going to deduct these from the owner statements that are generated as well. So you can go through then and generate the owner statements. Uh, this will pull up a full owner statement. It'll let you know all of the revenue and expenses that have been recorded over this period, all the way down to you know the final sub uh, cash total. Finally, what you'll get are the owner distribution items uh, at the bottom, and then these items, of course, uh, be marked as paid as well uh, off of the owner's balance. You have some delivery options here for these owner statements. You can have these emailed out to the owner. Uh, you can print them off or you can even just download a uh, PDF copy of it uh, for your records or to email off as you best see fit.